Hey guys, Ray again. Today we're in my home workshop, as you can see behind me. And the reason we're here is because I've got an interesting little project that came all the way from Spain. Now this, the contents of this box, is a 3D printer pellet extruder. Uh, it is an impressive little thing. I've only opened the box and taken a look at the parts, which we will do in a second and take a look at everything and assemble it. But I'd like to say that this is an impressive offering from another YouTuber. His name is Mahor Muñiz. And I'm going to put a link to his channel and videos uh, concerning the development of this extruder because I think it's impressive. Uh, full disclosure, I fully paid for this and it was quite a bit expensive including shipping. Uh, this is not sponsored nor was this given to me. I paid for it. So when I look at all these parts, I'm going to be very honest of what I see. So let's put it together. All right, so here we have the box of parts including an assembly drawing. Now I have gone through this already. We'll take these parts out. All right, so here we have all the parts. There are no instructions for this. Uh, so the assembly drawing is all you'll have. So here is the business end. If you see, that is the uh, extruder heating block, the nozzle, uh, and the cooling, I'm not even sure, the, the throat, the cooling throat. Uh, but it's a pellet extruder. So for a pellet extruder, you need a barrel and a screw which is what this is and this is how they would fit together the fit is nice i like the way this fits and you'll see that the barrel is actually fluted you'll see that right in there so it's interesting we've got a fluted barrel it does come with a silicone boot which is nice and it's already fitted with a heater and a thermistor so also very nice uh, details the extruder motor is a nema 17 it's a geared motor so it's a NEMA 17 geared motor, typical four lead. We've got some assembly hardware there, the brackets, and we'll see how that goes together, and the coupler. So all in all, not, not a bad kit. Now this is not enough. This is not all the parts. You will have to print, or I had to print some of these parts, and I'll show that to you now. So I'm printing the parts, just to see how they're all gonna fit on my two printers here. This is a uh, GTEC D200 and this is the GTEC Me Creator 2. They work great. As you can see, I got rid of the other one. My Monoprice Mini Select, I got rid of that one. Gave it to my niece and nephew. Those parts, as you can see here, we've got the side plates, the two side plates. Um, I think this is the, the fan guard and the hopper and cooling assembly. So these are the parts I had to 3D print and I used PETG. I printed these in PETG and the reason is that's why the, I printed it in PETG. It is not necessarily indestructible, but close enough um, it's a higher temperature and it's not going to be like PLA. So that is why I use PTG and I think it's going to be perfect for that. So let's assemble this. All right. I think that the first thing we want to do is attach these brackets. Now you'll notice that these two brackets, they look very similar, uh, but there is a difference. And that difference is right here in this center hole. One of them is bigger than the other. Uh, and it looks like the bigger one is the one that fits over the motor, the extruder motor. You can see that right there. Looking at the drawing, it appears that this actually bolts in this way. And not only that, but it appears that these brass standoffs also screw in here like so. Now I cannot see any reason why these cannot go in right now. And the design of these brackets are actually quite clever. What you'll see is and I wasn't sure why this was. There's a window cut here and here. You'll notice that the boss on the gearbox part uh, actually would have in been interfering with this curve. So they've left enough material on the ends to hold it together. But right there, this would not have allowed this part to sit all the way down because it would have hit the, the metal. So, and, and you can see it on both sides. So that's quite clever. So I have a set of tiny little wrenches that I never use because I never do anything so tiny. And 
this might be the day. After all these years, this might actually be the day. There it is, 3 16 So I'm just going to snug these bars up. And if you're paying attention, these bars um, go on, screw into the motor. They don't screw into the plate. I think the coupler goes on next. And this is a, they call these uh, spider couplers or shaft coupling. And the reason it's called a spider coupling is because this piece right here is the spider. This part fits right in between both halves and it couples them together. But it also allows for just the slightest amount of mismatch. So these are these are pretty nice to have. So we're gonna put that on next. Put it on right in here, as you can see how this fits. Bit of a tight fit, but that's not bad. And we're gonna snug this one up. Now the extruder screw. That would make sense if that's next. And you can see what I was talking about. Let me let me put this down here. You can see it allows for just the tiniest bit of misalignment. That should set us in right where we want to be for the the barrel of the extruder. So that's what that's going to look like. But we've got a few more parts to put in here. Let's do that next. So putting this aside for a second, this is the hopper. And this hopper gets assembled as a snap fit. Again, PETG makes it very tough. These holes are a little bit tight, so I'm just going to open them up a little bit. There we are, just by hand. That's all you really need, just to close this out. That is a very nice snug fit. And you can see what happens now is that the pellets would go in here. So you can see the pellets go in here and will come in contact with the top of the screw that actually is protruding past the extruder barrel. And on this side, I think is a fan. Let's see if the fan fits on this side. There you have it. So that's a very nice fit. Again, just a an example of how nicely he made the model. So if we look at it, the fan will actually be blowing in through this region, the pellets, uh, keeping them cool of any rising heat. Very, very clever. Very nice. All right. There's the hopper assembly again. What I like about this is that if it gets damaged, you can always print another one. Replace it, not a big deal. Or take the model and modify it, which I might just do that. Because this seems like it's a little bit too, if you look at it dead on, it's a little bit too close to the motor. So I may have a hard time loading it. So either way, the model is, um, is uh, available when you, when I purchase this, uh, Mahor sent me a link and I got a hold of his models and printed them out. So that was a nice touch. So while we're here, let's just take a look at this heater block and extruder nozzle assembly. So what I like is that the extruder barrel heating throat and nozzle are basically one integral piece and here is the heater block the heater block is one piece and the thermistor and heater cartridge are all together the other thing I like is that the heater cartridge is in line giving you much more heat transfer than when they are perpendicular so I like that it's a nice touch so you don't really need to worry about all that business between the the heating uh, the nozzle and the throat assembly actually being in contact with each other inside the heater block the problem is taken care of by having this as a separate unit so i really like this okay so i contacted mahor about this issue here where these holes are not tapped 
You see there, they're just through holes, not tapped. And he told me, and I will tell you this, that, that Mahor has been very responsive to any of my emails. Uh, the uh, These brackets were early prototype brackets. So I guess I'm one of the first adopters on his first batch, which I was not aware of. And that this is going to be corrected in future um, versions. However, uh, for right now, I've got some nuts, according to his suggestion, uh, just through bolt this together. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this on here. You can see what I'm doing. Right there, I've opened up the hole. That's the original, original size hole there. And I'm just opening it up. It's not much, so I'm able to do it by hand. Now, I've got two fans. One fan goes here. Like so. That's a, that's a pretty good fit, actually. It's so like I said before, uh, it didn't come with all of the hardware, so um, I put these in here. Uh, there's something that I had that came close. Same is true for mounting the part cooling fan uh, shroud, the part cooling fan shroud. No hardware was included, but I've got a few screws that I can use to mount it. So, oh, there you go. So I'm going to mount it in this position right here through these holes in the 3D printed parts. All right, so there is the part cooling fan housing, shroud, whatever you want to call that. Uh, it's on there pretty good. Everything aligned fairly well. So now that we have the bottom portion attached, we're going to put this fan on. And it wants to go the other way. I will say that all the 3D printed parts fit very well. I can see this down here has got better alignment. So I'm actually very impressed with uh, the modeling. He did a good job on these 3D printed parts. You can see how well that fits. So I'm going to just attach this one now. All right, there we have the entire extruder assembly. Uh, it's actually a very interesting little unit, compact. And... Uh, Unfortunately, I can't test this out. Let me show you why I can't this, test this out just yet. So here are my two printers. This is the D200 and this is the Me Creator 2. And uh, obviously this one's much smaller than this one. The problem is this is a 300 by 180 by 180 uh, millimeter printer and the extruder needs to sit all the way against the frame, which will be a problem. It's not gonna fit. And on the Me Creator 2, I can get away with it in this position. But when the extruder moves all the way to the left-hand side, it would also hit the frame. But we can fix it. Well, you can see the problem as to why I can't test this out right now. I, my printer is just too small. However, I do have a solution. All right, it is a Folger, Folger, I'm not sure which way. Folger Technologies FT5 version 2. This is a 12 by 12 by 12. If you're not familiar with this particular printer, there are plenty of videos of the assembly of this printer that's got quite a few pieces. Uh, I'm going to be putting it together. I won't make a video of the assembly because there's a lot of videos on that. Uh, full disclosure, I did purchase this completely. Uh, nothing's been sponsored here. I paid good money for this. I'm going to be putting it together, putting that pellet extruder on it and doing some testing. So you might be asking yourself, Ray, why are you buying another 3D printer? You already have two of them. Why are you uh, going through the effort of testing out a pellet extruder? Of course, you know my motto. If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. I'm planning a very large format 3D printer, and I need to learn a few things. And I think in order to make it viable, I'm going to have to use a 
toilet extruder. Maybe not this one, it might be too small. Yes, this is going to be too small a pellet extruder for the printer that I'm planning. So stay tuned, I'm hoping to finish the design and I'll explain that to you in a few weeks or months. Uh, but stay tuned and in order to stay tuned you need to hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like, comment and of course subscribe for updates on all my future videos including running this 3D printer pellet extruder. I have high hopes for this. I'm sure it's not going to be a smooth transition, but it's going to be pretty cool. Coupled with this printer, might be a good combination. Thanks again.